Hello and welcome to this video on Juno's device portfolio. In this video, we're going to take a look at the different devices that's available from Juniper and we'll keep our focus mainly on switching devices, routing devices and security devices. Now Juniper has a very wide range of products in its portfolio and it is impossible to look at every device in detail. So we'll just take a look at the important ones and we'll keep this video very short just like a high level overview of the different devices. And then in the end, I will show you a place where you can go and you can read in detail about the different devices. So without wasting any time, let's start by looking at switching devices. Talking about switching devices, we have two main types of switches. Number one is the EX switches and number two is the QFX switches. The EX series of switches support voice, video and data as you would expect. The important part about these switches is that they support 8 quality of service queues per switch port, which means you have a lot of flexibility in terms of prioritizing your traffic. These switches also support virtual chassis technology, which means you can take multiple physical switches, you can take these physical switches, let's call them S1, S2 and S3, you can take these physical switches and combine them and make them appear like one larger and much more powerful switch. Isn't that really fantastic? Taking multiple switches and combining them and making them into one switch. Those are the important features about the EX series of switches. The other one which is QFX series, these are high performance switches mainly designed for enterprise, service provider and data center kind of environments. These switches also support virtual chassis technology. So these are the important features of these two switches Let's take a look at the different models of these switches. Talking about the EX switches, you have the EX2200 which has a capacity of 56 Gbps on a 24 port model and a capacity of 104 Gbps on a 48 port model. You also have the EX2200C. The C here stands for compact and it's a 12 port switch which has a capacity of 28 Gbps. So these are the EX series of switches that you see here. And then you have the EX3300 switches which has a capacity of 128 Gbps on a 24 port model and 176 Gbps on a 48 port model. Moving on you also have the EX4200 switch which has a capacity of 136 gigabits per second on a 48 port model. And then you have the EX4300 switch which has a capacity of 496 gigabits per second on a 48 port model. And then you also have the EX4500 and 4600 switches. Both of these are very powerful. EX4500 uh, has a capacity of 960 Gbps and EX4600 has a capacity of 1.4 Tbps. Finally on the EX switches you have the EX6200 which is a 10 slot chassis as you can see here out of which Two slots are reserved for SRE which stands for switch fabric and routing engine modules. The remaining eight slots are 48 port line cards. So you can imagine this is really powerful stuff. And on the right hand side you have the EX8200 which has a capacity of 12.4 terabits per second. Talking about routing devices, Juniper has a very wide range of routers in its routing portfolio. And what you see on the screen is just a list of common routers that you may encounter. So you have the MX series of routers, you have the PTX uh, series of routers, you have the ACX series of routers, you have the E series, the T series, and the M series of routers. This list is not complete. There are other series of routers as well. Uh, but these are the common ones that we're going to talk about. Talking about the MX series of routers, these are mainly edge routers designed for service provider and enterprise kind of networks. And there's a very wide range of models inside the MX series that you can choose from. So you start with the VMX which is the virtual MX router which is a virtualized version of the MX router. And then you have the MX5 router which is a 20 Gbps capacity router. You have the MX10 router which is 40 Gbps in capacity. You have MX20 which is 60 Gbps in capacity. And then you move all the way up to MX2020 which has a capacity of, let me put that here, MX2020 which has a capacity of 80 terabits per second. So as you can see a very wide range of models inside the MX series of routers. 
talking about the PTX series of routers. These are also known as packet transport routers and these are core routers designed for high volumes of traffic. Inside the PTX series you have three main kinds of routers. You have the PTX 1000 which has a capacity of 2.88 terabits per second and then you have the PTX 3000 which has a capacity of 8 terabits per second and then you have the PTX 5000 which has a capacity of 24 terabits per second. So as you can see these are really powerful routers capable of handling high volumes of traffic. And those are the only three models inside the PTX series of routers. Moving on to the ACX series of routers, these are temperature hardened devices mainly designed for mobile backhaul and service provider kind of networks. You start with ACX 500 which has a capacity of 6 Gbps and then you have the ACX 1000, 2000 and 4000 series of routers all of which has a capacity of 60 Gbps. Now even though all these routers have the same capacity there will be differences in terms of uh, some features like the interfaces and slots. And then finally you have the ACX 5000 series of routers inside which you have the ACX 5048 which has a capacity of 1.44 terabits per second and then you also have the ACX 5096 which has a capacity of 2.88 terabits per second. Talking about the E-series of routers, the E-series routers are mainly broadband services routers and these are ideal for providing internet based services like IPTV, voice over IP, video on demand etc. So these are mainly used for broadband services. Uh, the main routers inside the E-series would be the E120 which has a capacity of up to 120 Gbps with six line modules. And then you also have the E320 which has a capacity of up to 320 Gbps with 12 line modules. And as you move higher along the product line you have the ERX, they call it the ERX1410 which has a capacity of up to 10 Gbps with 14 line modules. And you also have the last one which is ERX1440 which has a capacity of 40 Gbps with 14 line modules. Those are the important routers in the E-series. Talking about the T-series routers, these are multi-chassis core routers and these are highly powerful routers. You can call this as the beast among the routers. The models of the T-series routers start with T640 which has a capacity of up to 640 Gbps. You also have the T1600 which has a capacity of 1.6 terabits per second. And then you have the T4000 which has a capacity of up to 4 terabits per second. And then you also have the T-series multi-chassis routers that allow you to connect multiple T-series routers into a single routing infrastructure. Under the T-series multi-chassis you have the TX matrix which allows you to connect up to four T640 routers into a single routing infrastructure. And then you also have the TX Matrix Plus, let me put that here, Matrix Plus, that allows you to connect four T4000 routers or eight T1600 routers into a single routing infrastructure. So as you can see, these are really powerful routers. The M-series routers are multi-service edge routers with combined capabilities of both IP and MPLS. And there are four models inside the M-series starting with the M7i which has a capacity of 10 Gbps. You have the M10i which has a capacity of 16 Gbps. You have the M120 which has a capacity of 120 Gbps. And then you have the M320 with a capacity of 320 Gbps. So those are the four routing devices in the M series and overall these are the routing devices I wanted to talk to you about. Let's quickly move to the last topic of this video which is security devices and then we'll wrap up this video. Moving on to the security devices, the security devices from Juniper are available under the name SRX 
and we start with the VSRX which is the virtual SRX platform the VSRX is an SRX software running on a virtualized platform and it has all capabilities like firewall networking capabilities and security capabilities and it also supports VMware EXXi and uh, KVM platforms so that's SRX on a virtualized platform talking about the physical side of things you start with the SRX 100 series which starts at 700 Mbps capacity both of these firewalls 100 and 110 both of these are 700 Mbps firewalls and then you have the SRX 200 series which starts at 850 Mbps and you increase in capacity as you move along and then we have the SRX uh, 300, 350 and 650 firewalls the SRX 300 has multiple models inside it like the SRX 300, the SRX 320 etc and it starts at 1 Gbps capacity the SRX 1400 series and the 1500 series firewalls are available at 10 Gbps capacity the SRX 3400 and 3600 start at 30 Gbps and then you have the big ones the SRX 5400, 5600 and 5800 which starts at 65 Gbps and goes all the way up to 320 Gbps those are the models of the firewalls under the SRX series the good thing about these firewalls is that all of these firewalls have UTM capabilities unified threat management it's a part of all these firewalls right from the basic till the top model all these firewalls have UTM capabilities even VSRX the virtual SRX has some limited UTM capabilities that's about all the devices that I wanted to talk to you about to learn more about these devices I highly encourage that you go to Juniper's website which is www.juniper.net and you will see a list of products and services available from Juniper I highly recommend that you go to these sections called as routers security and switches you will be able to see all the devices that we talked about you'll be able to see the product specifications data sheets brochures etc and I highly recommend that you spend some time on this website I'm glad that we have completed this video and I promise you there's just one more video before we get onto the device and that's the next video about understanding Junos understanding Junos is going to be the next video where we are going to be talking about the basics of Junos we'll talk about the differences between the routing engine and the packet forwarding engine this is a really interesting topic and then we'll also talk about transit traffic versus exception traffic we'll also talk about process separation which is an important Junos topic and we'll also take a look at the different processes that's running on a Junos device that's the plan for the next video. I'm really excited to see you in the next video and I'd like to thank you for watching.